in this video, we're going to see how we can use the beginning trig identities from the previous video in order to rewrite each of these trigonometric expressions into hopefully a simpler expression. So you can think of an algebra class, you might want to simplify an algebraic expression. We're doing the same thing here with trigonometric ones which unfortunately can get a bit more complicated due to all of the various trig entities that are out there. Uh, these examples are only gonna require the beginning eight identities we mentioned before, but as we go further in this class, we're gonna get more complicated situations that need other identities. And in fact, we're gonna use these techniques to prove new trig identities out of them. So this is just kind of a warm up, get you used to the things you can do, and you'll develop these skills as you get more and more practice. So the first example here, we have a complex fraction, a fraction divided by a fraction. So we know we can write that as the top fraction multiplied by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. And then we see it happens that the sine thetas will cancel out here. We're left with one over cosine theta. And if we use the reciprocal identity, one over cosine theta is secant theta. And so that means this original expression here, this really complicated way of writing secant theta. That's what we just showed. So for each one of these, we're gonna use it in as we have, try to work things out until we get a simpler answer. Now on this one over here, secant theta minus tangent theta sine theta there is no obvious like fraction multiplied by reciprocal there's none of that here none of them are like terms right now and when you have something like that it can be a good idea to convert everything into sine and cosine and then just use those two functions to simplify what you have left so from the reciprocal identity secant theta is one over cosine theta uh, from the ratio identity, tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta multiplied by sine theta. Then when we combine the two factors in the second term, we multiply. So sine theta by itself over here is sine theta over 1. Multiply the numerators, we get sine squared theta over cosine theta. Now these happen to have common denominators, so I can combine the two fractions, subtract in the top. And you might say, well, there's nothing else I can do. There is no trig identity left. But if you think back to one of the most important identities, the Pythagorean identity, it said that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is one. And if you subtract sine squared theta on both sides, you'll see that one minus sine squared theta is the same as cosine squared theta. So that numerator, I can replace that with cosine squared theta. Finally, one of the cosines can cancel. And the final simplified answer is just cosine theta. Now you probably would never have imagined that the long expression secant theta minus tangent theta sine theta is going to give you the same answer as cosine theta as long as it's defined but we just proved that those expressions are equivalent here continuing on the third example we have a square here now this one in particular i want to make sure everyone's aware from algebra rules you cannot just bring that square inside the correct way to square a binomial is to either write it out twice like I'm doing here or to have memorized the um, the identity for when you are squaring a binomial it's usually better just to write it out I should not have a square anymore I apologize for that so then we foil it out sine times sine is sine squared the outer would be sine times cosine the inner would also be sine times cosine, and the last would be cosine squared. Now we can combine together sine squared plus cosine squared, that's gonna be one. 
And we can also combine together sine theta, cosine theta, because they're like terms. And so we're going to get 1 plus 2 sine theta, cosine theta. And that would be our simpler way of writing that expression. So you can see that sometimes these can go quick, sometimes they can be really complicated in many steps. Sometimes you may do things that are not obvious at first. And this is why we make you practice so much on these identities, so that you get good at it. So that when you take a class in calculus and you're trying to work out some big trig expression as part of a calculus problem, Hopefully, you'll remember the techniques you learned in this class, and you can handle that and, and simplify it without an issue. Whereas if you forgot that, even if you were good at calculus, you likely wouldn't be able to get the right answer. So you're building up these skills now to be able to use in problems in calculus and beyond. Now for this last one here, this last example, we have two fractions that are being added, but they do not have a common denominator. So I need to make that. One of them has cosine theta, one has sine theta. So the LCD would be sine theta times cosine theta. And so if we wanna go ahead and convert each fraction to have that, this first fraction to get a sine theta cosine theta on the bottom, you have to multiply on top by sine theta, which is gonna give you a sine squared theta. For the second fraction, you have to multiply top and bottom by cosine theta. And if you multiply top, you get cosine squared theta. Now that they have the same denominator, we can add them. On top, we get sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta over sine theta times cosine theta. Sine squared plus cosine squared by the most important entity is one. And then you may or may not realize immediately that this is the same as if we had one over sine theta times one over cosine theta. And I do this so that I can go ahead and say one over sine theta is cosecant theta, one over cosine theta is secant theta, and this would be our final simplified answer here. Okay, so again, you can play around it, and as you know, you do whatever you can to try to combine them together. You do have to use algebra rules like common denominators and multiply by reciprocals and things like that and, and uh, foiling out. All those things are gonna come into play, but now you're doing it with trigonometric functions.